following interview was conducted with Verna Emery, University Periodicals and Purdue Press for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, January 26, 2010 at a residence in West Lafayette. This is part two of the interview. Welcome. Good afternoon, Verna, and Thank I'll you. turn it over to you. Right. I, I may have touched on some of these subjects in the earlier uh, session, uh, so forgive me if I repeat, but I think a lot of it's new. I just wanted you to know that uh, William J. Whalen founded the Purdue University Press in 1960, and he was director of the press from its founding until his retirement in 1992, at which time the Office of Publications and the Purdue University Press split with each en entity being, dis being assigned its own director. Until his retirement, Bill was director of the Office of Publications as well as director of the press. And in addition, he was a professor in the Department of Communications. In 1990, the Purdue Uni University Press staff moved from Building D South Campus Courts to Building B South Campus Courts. Other than Bill, who remained in uh, Building D, the press staff consisted of two full-time members, Margaret Hunt, who was managing editor, and Carol McGrew, who was production manager. At this time, some of the manuscripts were sent to freelance editors. I believe the design of the books and their distribution remained with the Office of Publications. I had retired at the time of this physical move. Shortly after Bill's retirement in 1992, a full-time director was hired, and I believe others were added to the staff of Purdue University Press. In 1990, the year I retired, the budget for Purdue University Press was $72,000, which was used for production and promotion of the books. Book sales recouped most of this sum. The budget figure did not include salaries of the staff, at that time consisting of the director and two full-time editors, nor did it include the cost of the office rent or upkeep. During my tenure with the press from 1977 until 1990, Bill handled the budgeting. I, however, set the price of the published titles, and they were priced to break even. Press runs were in the low thousands. Sometimes we did a second printing, and frequently the second printing would be a soft softbound edition. Now the manuscripts that were submitted to the press came from both within Purdue and from outside, and they were presented to the editorial board with a precy of the work's contents and an estimate of the cost of production and promotion. Board members were appointed for a three-year term by the university's executive vice president for academic affairs. The nine faculty members came from varied disciplines. The press director and the managing editor rounded out the board membership. The board members suggested at least two experts in the field of each manuscript to evaluate the work. If two favorable reports returned, the board um, voted to accept the work for publication. Uh, if the evaluation was split, a third expert reviewed the manuscript. Um, over my years of tenure, the press developed a few special series, and I've listed for you, I'm listing here for you, for your interest, the series and some, not all, but some of the titles that were included. One series, uh, and the series were, were uh, initiated uh, frequently by a, a member of the university staff who would submit a manuscript and say it was accepted. Then they knew colleagues at other universities that were uh, working in the same area, and they might suggest that uh, the colleague from another university uh, would send the manuscript to us, which is what happened. The f one of the series was called Balkan and Danubian Studies. The first title we received was from Charles Ingrell. It was entitled In Quest and Crisis, Emperor Joseph I and the Habsburg Monast Monarchy. Then we received Governance and Grievance 
Habsburg policy and the Italian Tyrol in the 18th century by a Miriam Levy, who was not a member of the Purdue faculty. As a matter of fact, none of the remaining ones remembers the Purdue faculty. The third one was the Habsburg Empire and the Sea, Austrian naval policy, 1997 to 1866, by a Lawrence Sandhaus. And the Falcon and the Eagle, Montenegro and Austria-Hungary, 1908 to 1914, and that was authored by John Treadway. It's interesting that this particular area has figured recently in, in, in uh, uh, political um, aspects. Another series that we had was the History of Philosophy. Two of the books in that, the first was Radical Reflection and the Origin of the Human Sciences by Calvin Schrag, a well-known philosopher here on the Purdue faculty, and David Hume, An Introduction to His Philosophical System by Terence Penelham. He, as far as I remember, was not a Purdue faculty member. Uh, Another series that we had, and probably the largest one, was The Theory and Practice of Biography and Biographical Criticism. Some examples of that <clears throat> were the moral picturesque studies in Hawthorne's fiction by Daryl Abel, T.S. Eliot, the critic as philosopher by Lewis Freed, the quixotic vision, or the chaotic vision, excuse me, of Sinclair Lewis by Martin Light, the lines of life, theories of biography from 1880 to 1970, that was David Navarre, Ultimately Fiction, Design in Modern American Literary Biography by Dennis Petrie. That's, that's just an example. I, I have, that is, is the largest series that we have, and I, I won't go on with that. Another series, and these books, as I recall, were all soft-bound, and the series title was Science and Society. Hermes Bound, the Policy and Technology of Telecommunications by Claire McGillum and William McLaughlin. Distant Hunger, Agriculture, Food, and Human Values by Heather Johnson Nicholson and Ralph Nicholson. Organized Technology, Networks and Innovation in Technical Systems by Wesley Shrum. And The Arguments of Agriculture by Jan Wojcik. In addition to these scholarly series, we also developed uh, some expertise in other areas, one being regional titles. Uh, Regional titles were important to us because they helped to make us known within the state um, as well as outside the state. One of those, well, there were three written by Robert Kreeble, who had been editor of the of the local newspaper, the Journal and Courier. The first one, Where the Saints Have, Dro- Have Trod, The Life of Helen Galbert. She was an early uh, feminist. Um, plain Old Charlie Dean, Pioneer Hoosier Botanist was the second title. And then Poets, Painters, Paupers, Fools, Indiana Stein Family. Uh, those three were by Robert Kreeble. Then there were two that we did uh, by Robert Topping, who was uh, the director of, for some years of the University News Service. One was the Hovde years, uh, covering the years of, of uh, Frederick Hovde's presidency, and then A Century and Beyond, the History of Purdue University. In addition to regional titles, we also did some trade titles Um, One, Mark Twain Speaks for Himself by Paul Fatou, a professor in the English department, and that particular work went into three printings. My Amiable Uncle, Recollections About Booth Tarkington by Susanna Mayberry. The History of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad by John Stover. And From the Margin, Writings in Italian Americana by Anthony Tambori, 
these, he was an editor, and he was from our faculty, and two uh, scholars from outside our faculty. I, I do want to say that these titles, although they had general appeal, they did involve scholarship. Then, during my tenure with the board, or tenure with the press, um, we started a poetry series. I, as in high school, had written poetry, and I've always been fond of poetry. I haven't written poetry beyond my high school years, however. But in 1980, we published the first book-length manuscript of poetry. It was All That So Simple by... Uh, Neil Myers, a member of the English department. Uh, then in 1986, the, the Purdue, editorial, Purdue Press Editorial Board uh, committed to publishing one poetry book a year. And in 1990, uh, the year that I retired, the editorial board and the poetry series co-editors established the Verna Emery Poetry Prize a competition with a cash award of $500 and the publication of the winning volume. And the year after I retired, in 1991, the press received 492 poetry entries. Seven members of the Purdue's creative writing program read the manuscript and narrowed the field to four entries, which were then sent to Gerald Stern of the University of Iowa Writers Workshop which is the oldest and most prestigious creative writing program in the United States. And he judged those that were sent to him. He selected the title Alcatraz, written by Richard, Richard Cecil, who um, was on the faculty of uh, Indiana University. During my time at the press, the poetry one poetry volume entitled Fishing with Blood by Fleda Brown Jackson won the Great Lakes Colleges Association New Writers Award. And in addition, Donald Carter, uh, a, a graphic designer in the Office of Publication who designed all the poetry books during my tenure, won the Chicago Book Clinic Award for the design of All That's So Simple by Neil Myers. And, and that... That uh, covers some of the books that we published. Now, in addition to the series, oh, I, I should point out that in 1988, the annual output of the press was six volumes. Uh, compare that with 125 volumes by Indiana University, 100 volumes by Illinois University Press, and 31 by Ohio State University Press. As you can see, Pup was by far the smallest press in the Big Ten. Uh, I want to stress that in addition to our series, uh, we published in, in a wide variety of disciplines, and uh, I'll just mention a few. One, so we'll start with political science. A the title there was The Political Pulpit by Roderick Hart. And then there was another in that same area of political science, Meaning and Appreciation, Time and Modern Political Life by Michael Weinstein. We published in Sociology, an example being Black-White Contact in Schools, Its Social and Ac Academic Effects by Martin Patchen. Then in Psychology, a sample of a title is Father, Have I Kept My Promise? Madness as Seen from Within by Edith Weisskopf Jolson. She was not a member of, of the faculty. In economics, we had essays in contemporary fields of economics by George Horwich and James Quirk. They were editors of that volume. In addition to that, in horticulture, we had... Mm, Methods in Fruit Breeding by James Moore and Jules Janik. And that was a very popular work in that field. I believe it had, I know it had more than one printing, uh, just how many printings, I'm not sure. And we published in Agronomy, a sample there would be Guar, Agronomy, 
Production, Industrial Use, and Nutrition by Roy Whistler and Theodore Heimowitz. Most of our titles, however, came uh, from the English department, the English literature, such samples as Mirror on the Stage, Mirror on the Stage, the political, the Pulitzer plays as an approach to American drama by Tom Ad, Thomas Adler, In a Dark Time, The Apocalyptic Temper in the American Novel of the Nuclear Age by Joseph Dewey, and The David Myth in Western Literature by Raymond Jean Grantaine and Jan Wojcik. And that just about covers what I had in mind to talk about today. I, I can, however, give you some titles of some of the poetry books, which might indeed be interesting. Um, and most of these, in fact, all of these poetry books came from outside the university, except Neil Myers, the first one, All That's So Simple. We had In the Nocturnal Animal House by Sarah Cotterell, Do Not Peel the Birches by Fleeta Brown Jackson, A Season of Loss by Jim Barnes, The Spine by Michael Spence, Fishing with Blood by Fleda Brown Jackson, La Plata Cantata, another one by Jim Barnes, Food for the Winter by Geraldine Connolly, and Murderer's Day by E. M. Shorb. So that's what I have to say today. Um, got a couple things. Did you ever have any, were there ever any book signings? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, held on on campus. As well, well, we we every 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 year we would uh, uh, join with other uh, organizations to welcome the new faculty members, and we displayed our works and talked to them. And uh, we, this is at Purdue. On this campus. is at Purdue. Yes, we did have books book signings a few, but quite frankly, I can't remember, Katie, just mm -hmm. just which ones or, or sure. when. Um, was this did. kind of part of an orient the welcome for new faculty That's and to right. show that the press was there and, and make them visible and whatever. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was marketing? Who would handle the marketing for for you for the press? The marketing people. I mean, in, in other words, to get the, the let the media know about the books. And, I did. Oh, you handled that mm -hmm. too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about a book fair? Did you ever have anything like that? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not that I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, reimbursement for the authors. Were, did they get any for the They the did get an honorarium. They did, mm -hmm. okay. I don't know whether you'd call it an honorarium, but yes, they, they did. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, how would you, um, so did the board, did they help you solicit authors, and how did some of the manuscripts come to you? Well, in the series, yes. Okay. Uh, not necessarily, as I said, not necessarily the, the board, but uh, uh, um, authors. Who, who uh, had submitted a work and been accepted would then uh, contact their colleagues. Um, but most of the, of the material that came to us came unsolicited, whether it came from within the university or without. Okay. I mean, we did have a catalog, of course, that we did annually. Um, uh, that and, you, and you send that out? Yes. Campus-wide as well as external? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the press has really grown a lot, and I think one thing we want to mention that it, original's name probably was called or was called Purdue Studies, and then it became the Purdue University That's Press. That's my understanding, right? Yes. And they did some publications, and one of the book is, books is the, the old book about the history of engineering, which is a classic and mm -hmm. and used as a good reference source. That was before my time. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but it was sort of the the bridge, and you were sort of the bridge between the author and the audience, and to try to break even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really grown a lot. I, I, I don't know how many they're publishing yeah. these days. But Do you know? This, I, I don't know either. Mm -hmm. um, That's. I'd like to talk to the new right, director and right, find exactly. that out. Mm -hmm. um, but and this, I just, was, this was just up here. You just lucked out on this. Oh, I did. As mm -hmm. you said in the earlier, and you just... Right. Mm -hmm. They were just it's waiting what, for you to finish. It's what I was born to do. Yeah. <laughs> no. Right. Mm -hmm. And did, did, um, did you get to interact with quite a few of the authors? Oh, yes. I mean, they... they Anyone that comes to mind that... Well, not not uh, at, at the moment, no, but I, I would 
get books from them, which would be, uh, they would send me a copy or they would autograph my copy of the book with, with, with uh, 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 words that uh, uh, show that they appreciated what I did. Um, I got to know some, some, of their, some things about their family when they had a new baby. Uh, many of them would come to campus uh, uh, when they submitted their manuscript and knew it was accepted. And uh, um, we would go out to dinner. As a matter of fact, some of them stayed at my home over, overnight. Sure. Um, yes, I, uh, I became very fond of them. So. How would you handle, how did, you, how did the board or who would handle it? The manuscript was sort of out of, not acceptable? Uh, did you sometimes suggest maybe another source that they might want to use? Well, I, as I recall, we would send them a letter. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I right. don't know that we... But sometimes we may have, over time, made such a suggestion. Right. But we it's, simply it's, returned the manuscript with a, a right. nice Right, and sometimes letter. it's like the journal articles, you know, if you revise it or something of that sort, that mm -hmm. uh, that might help a little bit mm -hmm. with the publication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Any... Any other thing that you can think of? I can't okay. think of any other thing, Kitty. Okay. And she showed also the, uh, you might want to mention that you came across a couple of the articles that oh, yes. talked about the press and also the yeah. alumnus, we, which we, is good. We, we, did, we did get quite a bit of publicity uh, in Purdue Today and uh, in the Journal and Courier. Right. And, and and in a Purdue alumnus. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I, did I, I think I mentioned earlier that I, uh, even though I wasn't a member of the press association, there's a, a, a press association, a scholarly press association, even though we were too small to be members, we were invited to their conferences. And uh, uh, I, and, and after Margaret was, was hired, um, we would go to those conferences. I remember we went to one in Chicago, and we went to one in Ohio. We went to Indiana, of course. We went to Illinois. Um, and Wisconsin, did I say Wisconsin? And and I was always treated very well. The IU press was very friendly. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, as I recall, I, I visited them once, and they they acquainted me with their uh, entire uh, uh, layout and and how they functioned. And uh, as a matter of fact, when I retired, I. I I, I remember I received a letter from their marketing person, and 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 she was kind enough to congratulate that's very me on nice. my and retirement. She, re she remembered that, you mm -hmm. know, that yeah. uh, was kind mm -hmm. of that's kind of nice. You still, when you're trying to, um, you still keep reading your poetry. Do you still like, like to read poetry? The books? Do you see many of them? I haven't read poetry much lately. No. Yeah, no. but it's mm -hmm. nice to have those, yes, you, and yes. you go mm -hmm. through them and things yeah. of that sort. I still do a lot of reading. It's the it's the main thing I do in retirement, as a matter of fact. That's yeah. right. You keep well, well versed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then closing. So I think we sort of feel we've pretty much covered the press. You I think, think so. good. I think. So. I want to thank you very much. This is a nice part two, and it kind of puts the the, the part one and part two together. Good. Thank well, you. Thank Anna. you My for pleasure. caring about My the press. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs>